Oftentimes, whenever you have a solution, you can make what's called dilutions of it. So you have kind of something that is really concentrated, and you want to make a more dilute solution. Um, a lot of times this is used, like, if you want to store something, you store it concentrated, and then you use it more dilute. Like, you can imagine, like... Uh, like a frozen juice or something, you can buy a frozen concentrate, and then whenever you actually want to drink it, you add water to it, make it more dilute so it tastes right. So in chemistry, when we talk about dilution, the technical way of phrasing this is to say that we're going to add more solvent. Um, usually the solvent is going to be water, and that decreases the concentration of the solute. Now, one thing you can look at on the picture here, um, here's your initial solution and here's your diluted one over here. Notice that the volume increases. You keep the same number of particles. So in this case, if you count the blue um, spheres in there, there's 10 of them. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Whenever you come over to the one on the right, you also still have 10. So your amount of the solute doesn't change. Um, but what happens is, because it's in a larger volume, you say it's going to be more dilute. All right. So there's one important equation that helps you uh, figure all of this out. Um, I could basically derive this for you and kind of show you why it works. But I think the easier thing for all of us is just to say that um, the equation that you're going to need is C1V1 is equal to C2V2 where the concentration is from C, and then volume is going to be represented by V. So the initial concentration times the initial volume is equal to the final concentration times the final volume. Um, the unit for concentration doesn't matter as long as it stays the same, and the unit for volume doesn't matter as long as it's the same between the two. So you can use milliliters or liters, but it has to be the same in your initial and in your final conditions for volume. For concentration, it can be in molarity, it can be in parts per million, it can be in weight volume percent as long as it's the same between both of them. All right, so let's take a look at how we would do some of these dilution problems. All right, so in this case it says, how many milliliters of a 1.5 molar sodium chloride solution, doesn't say solution, but it should say solution there, must be used to prepare 300 milliliters of a 0 0.50 sodium chloride solution. So basically, you're going from a concentrated solution of 1.5 molar um, sodium chloride, and we want to dilute it to a 0 0.50 molar solution of sodium chloride. So basically, we want to make it three times less concentrated. So we would say, if we were to write out our thing, so the initial concentration is going to be 1.50 molar. The final concentration is going to be 0 0.50 molar. We can also say that the initial volume is equal to, we don't know, because it says how many milliliters of a 1.5 molar solution. So it does. we don't know how many milliliters of the 1.5 molar solution. So the C1, we don't know how much of V1, right, the ones go together. So 1.50 molar, we don't know. We're going to calculate V1. V2, we do know because we know we want 300 milliliters of the 0 0.50 molar sodium chloride solution. So here we're going to put 300 milliliters. All right, so our equation is C1V1 equals C2V2. And now we can plug in our numbers and solve it. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the math first. I'm going to divide both sides here by um, C1, so V1 is all by itself. Um, so it should look like that. V1 is equal to C2 over V2 divided by C1. Now we can say that V1 is equal to C2, 0 0.50 molar. Notice whenever I do this that I always include my units whenever I'm writing things out. Um, this is just a good habit to get into to make sure that you always are tracking your units and to make sure that they cancel out like they're supposed to. All right, so C2 is 0 0.50 molar. V2 is going to be 300 milliliters. C1 is going to be 1.50 molar. So now if I go through and I can cancel out molar, cancels out with molar, 
that means I'm going to be left with a number that's in milliliters. So V1 is equal to, and I would take 0.5 to times 300 and then divide it by 1.5. And my answer here is going to be 100 milliliters. So I would need 100 milliliters um, of that 1.5 molar sodium chloride solution. Okay. Um, one thing to always keep in mind is just after you do problems like this, make sure it makes sense. Uh, if you kind of end up writing the wrong number down, like you flip-flop C1 and C2, for instance, um, you could get a much different number. For instance, in this case, you would get uh, 900 instead of 100. Um, make sure it makes sense with your problem. You can't use 900 milliliters of something to make a 300 milliliter solution. It just doesn't work that way. So whenever you go through and do your math, think about the problem and make sure that your number makes sense. It's a good way to kind of double check your work to make sure that you get something that actually makes sense um, for the problem. Okay, so here's another one. How many milliliters of a 4% weight volume dopamine solution must be used to prepare 250 milliliters of a 0.08% weight volume solution. So again, C1, V1, C2, V2. Let's write down what our numbers are. How many milliliters of a 4% solution? Okay, so that means 4% and X are going to go together, right? So we're going to call these uh, the initial ones. So the initial concentration, 4.0%. Initial volume is going to be X. That's what we're going to solve for. And then must be used to prepare. My circles are overlapping here, but that's okay. The second concentration is going to be 0.08%, right? It's going to be significantly diluted. And we're going to want 250 milliliters of it. So again, we have C1V1 is equal to c 2 v 2 once again, we're going to solve for V1, so it's going to be C2, V2 over V, well, not V1, that's what we're solving for. C2, V2 over C1. So V1 is equal to C2, which is going to be 0.08%. Uh, V2 is going to be 250 milliliters divided by C1, which is 4.0%. Now, the percents cancel, right? Those are weight volume percents, so those cancel out. And then we can go through and do our math without really having to worry about percents or anything like that. You just type in the numbers. So it would be 0 0.08 times 250 times 4, or sorry, divided by 4. Um, and that would get you 0 0.08 times 250 divided by 4 should get you to 5. Um, we want two significant figures up here. So 5.0 in the unit that's left is going to be milliliters. And that would be your answer uh, for this problem. You would need 5 milliliters. Alright, so let's take a look at one more. So this one is a little more involved. So here is ketamine, which is an anesthetic. Um, it's supplied, if you look over here, in a 100 milligram per milliliter vial, right? So the solution is 100 milligram per milliliter. So let's say that you took two milliliters of this solution and you diluted it to a final volume of 10 milliliters. So two milliliters of this plus eight milliliters of water to get you to a total of 10 milliliters. How much of that diluted solution would you need to give to a patient if they needed 75 milligrams of that solution? All right, so first thing we're going to need to do is figure out the concentration of that diluted solution, right? So if you kind of work backwards here, here's our actual question. How much of the diluted solution should be administered to supply a dose of 75 milligrams? Well, it would help to know the concentration of that diluted solution, right? If it was 75 milligram per milliliter, we would know we needed one milliliter. Um, so we need to figure out the concentration of that uh, diluted solution. So one thing I want to point out, right, the solution here, the concentration is in milligram per milliliter. This isn't a unit that we've talked about before. 
Um, but it's still, it's a weight, milligram, divided by volume. So it's still a concentration. It's just something we haven't seen before. In terms of um, this particular unit, it's, a, it's another common type of unit used. Instead of moles per liter here, it's mass per liter. It's very similar to like a weight volume percent, right? Because it has weight and volume, but it's not given as a percent. So again, it's a conversion factor. 100 milligram per milliliter means that if we gave one milliliter, we would give someone 100 milligrams. If we gave them two milliliters, they would get 200 milligrams, so on and so forth. All right, so first thing we're going to do is our C1, V1, C2, V2. And this way we can figure out the concentration of that diluted solution. Well, the initial concentration, right, where we started off with was 100 milligram per milliliter. The initial volume, we're actually going to use 2 milliliters of that concentrated solution. So V1 is going to be 2 milliliters, 2.0 milliliters. Um, the final concentration, that's the one we don't know. That's going to be our question mark. And then the final volume is going to be 10 milliliters. Okay, so now we can solve for C2. So if we have uh, C1, V1 equals C2, V2, and this time we want to solve for C2, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by V2. So C2 is equal to C1, V1, divided by V2. All right, so now we can solve for uh, C2 here. So C2 is going to equal C1, which is 100 milligram per milliliter, times V1, which is going to be 2.0 milliliters, divided by V2, which is 10.0 milliliters. And this means that our um, milliliters are going to cancel out. Milliliters and milliliters go away. And the final concentration here, C2, is going to equal 100 times 2 divided by 10, or 20 milligram per milliliter. Okay, so now we know that we have a 20 milligram per milliliter diluted solution of ketamine. So the diluted solution is going to be 20 milligram per milliliter. So now the question is, is how much do we need to supply a dose of 75 milligrams? Well, one milliliter would give 20 milligrams, two milliliters would give 40 milligrams, three milliliters would give 60, four milliliters would give 80. So it's going to be between three and four milligrams. So, but the way we actually set that up is we take our known number here, which is 75 milligrams, 75 milligrams, and we're going to multiply it by our conversion factor. In this case, we want to get rid of milligrams, and we want an answer in milliliters. So we know there's 20 milligrams per one milliliter. If you take 75 now and divide it by 20, you're going to get 3.75, which I'm going to use um, two significant figures based on um, the numbers that were there. So we'll say it's 3.8 milliliters would be our final answer. Because again, remember that our milligrams canceled out leaving us with milliliters. So again, this is a pretty complicated problem in terms of having to do multiple steps. But again, in terms of the individual steps, they shouldn't be that bad if you have been working on and spending some time doing your um, practicing your conversions. And again, this is why these conversions and the dimensional analysis and everything is really important to be able to recognize what you have. So again, in this case, we have really had a unit up here in this milligram per milliliter, which we hadn't seen before. But knowing the problem-solving skills that we've been working on you know, throughout the course so far, hopefully by seeing that, um, you're still able to do these conversions.